Okay, this one's going to be uh, about the airflow across the coil in high ambient. Okay, if I have low airflow, what's going to be my suction and head pressure, super heat, subcool, so on? And if I increase the airflow, what's going to happen then? So, what I'm doing here, I've got 550 cubic foot per minute. It's a two ton air conditioner. And let's look at the numbers. Okay, 76.8. Uh, Superheat is 10, target is 9.9, .9, 245, and 3.4 subcool. Now, over here, okay, here we see that's the ambient temperature, return air temperature. That's also the outdoor ambient. So we're pretty close to 100 degrees, we're 98 anyway. And low airflow, not really what I would expect if I had proper airflow. I don't have high enough airflow. But super eats fine on it. So I'm going to increase the airflow. Now you can see I increased the airflow to about 850, which is a little over what this machine uh, is rated for being uh, two ton. And it's coming up, but we're going to wait on this and let it settle down, and then we'll check it again. Okay, right around, that's the ambient temperature and the return air temperature and the outdoor temperature. Okay, our uh, super eats a bit high on this thing. It was right on for the low airflow. It's a little bit high now. Uh, I'm not going to add charge to it. I'm going to leave it the way it is. But you notice we have 86 as our suction pressure and 14.3 superheat, 4.8 subcool, 258. And also, while I'm doing this, give you some saturated. Uh, 51 for suction and 119 for head. Uh, still uh, pretty low head. Okay, let's move along and, and we're going to add more air. Now I'm going to put a bunch of air into this thing. Uh, I'm going to put the max to it, which is about 1,480 CFM. Let's see what happens then. Okay, here again, it's starting to go way up. Uh, I'm going to let that settle down, and we'll get back to it. Okay, this thing has settled down, and the Super E just kept going up uh, as I added more air, which is pretty normal. Uh, 94 in the suction. Wow. This kind of flies in the face of one I did a, a year ago. I couldn't get over about 76 in it regardless of how high a return air I had. Um, I'm a little more particular with this one because I have uh, I have checked airflow on it so I know the CFM. Let's see what the ambient is. 99, pretty close to what what it was before. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of charges and see if I can get the uh, super heat correct. Okay, let's look at some final numbers here. This one's really different than the other one I did. I got a little higher ambient now, but because my ambient's like 99, I got 101 on my suction side. Uh, means the uh, saturated 60 degrees. Uh, 125 for the condensing temperature, which is still, it's only 25 plus ambient. It's not too bad. Uh, let's look at our split across the coil. Okay, 18.59, whatever. Uh, of course, it's dropped each time we've added air, and uh, that's as low as I've seen it. 
Would this thing survive this? Looking at the superheat, you know, it's a little high, not much above target. Uh, I'd be happier if I had a superheat of uh, probably about six or seven. Try to keep that uh, compressor cool. That's a lot of suction pressure on that thing. The amperage draw of the compressor is not in excess of what it's rated to draw. It's drawn about 12.34 and it's rated for 12.6. So I'm surprisingly it is not overdrawing. I think I'll do a check of the discharge temperature and we'll see what we find. No, the suction temperature is not 189. Uh, I took that temperature probe and put it on the discharge of the compressor. It's a pretty high discharge. I'd like to see it maybe, maybe 165. I'm going to drop the uh, super heat down a little bit and let's see what happens to that. Okay, still looking at discharge temperature. It went down some, not a whole lot. I'm going to take this back and put it on the suction side and we'll see what our super heat is now. I added about five ounces, and that's a lot for one of these things. Okay, even with the increased charge, it didn't make much difference. We did go up one degree, I think, in our ambient, and that may have made the difference. I don't know. Now we see it still seem to be running about 11 degrees superheat on this thing. I did reduce the uh, discharge temperature a little bit. I mean, we're running this thing way beyond what it should be running way too much air and way too high a return there but uh, anyway that's the effects I've seen of different air flows and high ambient uh, this one's different than the one I did before by quite a bit uh, kind of interesting how why it's so different